Hey guys, welcome back to Day to Day Chess. This is Sabina and you are on Subscribers Week. One more day and the Subscribers Week will be over. So if you have a really good game that you'd like to have featured on my YouTube channel, please feel free to email it to me on voiceors at yahoo.com ASAP, please. Because um, I'll be making my decision pretty soon and um, if you want your game to be analyzed, to tomorrow, just um, submit it to me, please. Aside from that, I would like to say that I'm trying my best to improve and enhance as much as I can my YouTube channel. So if you guys have any comments or feedback to give me, please do not hesitate to do so. I'm really looking forward to constructive um, feedback and uh, I'm going to try my best to incorporate as many of the things that you guys tell me as I can. Um, aside from that, I'm going to make a big, well, not super big, but a really uh, good announcement on Sunday. So be sure to stay tuned for the Seasoned Up Sunday Endgame Study Explained. And uh, that's about it with the announcements. Let's check out the game that I chose for today. Um, so my friend and my fiance's friend, Josh Osborne, sent us his game. And I would like to thank him super much for this. It's a very interesting game, and I'm pretty sure you guys will enjoy the tactics towards the end. Um, he played this game with Black against Kevin Liu in the Houston Class Championships uh, about four or five days ago. So let's check out the game, and let's see how much we can learn from it. There's always so much to learn, like I said, from every single game. It doesn't matter who played it, whether it is a beginner or um, the world champion, we still have something to learn from it. Um, so here is, uh, he went for the Slav and captured in c4. Good, e3. And George decided to play b5 and try to uh, hold on to his pawn up for as much as he could. And the line goes this way, a4, b4. And in this position, actually, uh, why normally goes knight e4 most of the time? And then after queen d5, knight d2. Because um, white really wants to get their pawn back and wants to develop their bishop. And of course, um, the knight looks much better in d2 than it does in a2. So this would have been maybe a better uh, approach for white for this variation. But um, Kevin Liu went for knight a2. And uh, Josh played a5, which I don't consider a necessary move in this position. I think e6 is anyways a move that black would like to play in this position uh, to finish up their development with uh, knight f6. The bishop will go to e7, castle. And with e6, we are defending this pawn in b4, so there's really no, point, no, no need to hurry to play a5. Sometimes we might keep that square for our queen, in fact. Uh, we often seen it in... Uh, queen's gambit's accepted. We see this idea with queen a5 and then, or in Slavs as well, like like this one, uh, queen a5 and then pushing uh, b3 and ideas of that kind. So a5 can be a square to be used by the queen or sometimes even the knight. So there's no point to play a5 too early, in my opinion. But this is just my opinion. I don't want to say this is good, this is wrong, since I'm not super familiar with this with this line. Bishop takes e4, knight f6. Knight f3, bishop e7, and then when white castles, we just castle back, you know. And queen e2, okay, bishop b7, and of course we are going to eventually prepare to play some c5. Uh, with with black, we cannot afford to stay with this bishop closed here in b7, so we would like to play c5 and open it as soon as possible. So this is basically my idea. I don't think a5 was necessary, but okay. Uh, Josh went for a5, bishop takes e4, knight f6, finishing up the development. Still e6 now, so that's why I was saying maybe we wanted that square for something else. Um, and so far, the opening went quite well, I would say. Black got the pawn, but then white recaptured it. Um, black is still kind of a little bit behind in development and might have some trouble developing this bishop from c8. But white also has, you know, not that great of a knight in a2. So, there are... Um, on the balance, we have both positive and negative sides. B3. 
And um, in this position, just play bishop b7, a very natural move. Sometimes we, we see ideas like bishop a6 and trying to, to trade the bishops is that bishop sometimes gets blocked on this diagonal if uh, c5 does not, uh, if black does not manage to play c5 early. But, um, you know, this is just another opportunity to try to, to trade the bishop. And then um, if white would take, for example, of course, it would take back with the knight and then still prepare c5 and the knight would come into play via c5 or c7 d5, either way. But bishop b7 is fine too, still want to play c5, and maybe the bishop uh, is better to be kept, because now it's going to be opened. On Ooh, that was a really bad drawing of <laughs> a diagonal, I'm sorry about that. So of course on the a8, h1 diagonal. Okay, queen e2, c5, bishop b2, very natural, and now... Of course, black is finishing the development with knight e7, a very natural move. Of course, we don't want it in c6 to close our own bishop. From d7, we have the opportunity of coming at some point via f6 if this knight um, gets traded. If not, via b6. Or if not, if, if white is very nice to capture in c5, we'll take back with the knight and the knight will be active attacking b6, getting ready to come towards e4. So, of course, white does not want to make that trade. Here, queen b6. I believe um, since white put their rook, which is normally staying on the c file, they put it on the d file, I think in this case, uh, queen c7 is is a possibility. And, you know, we don't need to play queen b6 because there's nothing on the c file and the queen from here looks a little bit on the queen side as well. But queen b6 is just as fine. It's nice. Rook d8, of course. Now, these two files, the c file and the d file, are going to be opened. So that's those are the two files where we have to put our rooks. As you can see, a very nice development by black. And a very nice way of put, arranging their pieces. So, uh, Josh is a 2052 uh, rating player and um, has a really good understanding of positional chess and development. Black does that as well. He's a 2004 player, but uh, also had a good um, a good understanding of how to put their pieces. The only thing I didn't really like is this rook in e1. These rooks belong to the c and d file. But okay. Now, capture in c5 takes 6. Queen takes e5, of course, with the queen. The bishop is good in e7 because we always can move the knight and have bishop f6 try to trade the bishop. And the bishop is a good protector, both f6 and uh, d8. Okay, bishop d6. Now that the knight went away from the defense, now bishop d6 trying to, to have some attacks in h2. f4. This is a weakening move for white. Just be careful when you're moving your pawns. I try to always remind you of that. Uh, when f4 is being played, you're obviously giving away the e4 square. You're weakening this pawn in e3. And for what? Is there a really direct threat that black has? No. So then there's no need to really make that move. In fact, here white would have this opportunity to make the sacrifice. I don't know how great it is, but um, king h8, bishop takes c8, and after queen takes c8, we can try to get the queen active in b5. This would have been a possibility for white, but definitely not f4. I mean, f4 is just weakening. So now rook e8, um, what other possibilities do we have? Well, we would like to utilize that square. So how exactly could we think of doing that? Uh, the computer, if you use the computer, probably in this position is going to tell you to play bishop e7, which is not really a humanly move, but the idea would be to try to keep the, the file open and then play some bishop d5 and capture and things like that. But you know, I, I, I don't think that move is necessary. You actually want to keep the bishop maybe on this diagonal so that white cannot play e4. So don't always trust the computer. It's not uh, always understanding the best the positional chess. Anyways, rook e8 was played by black. Knight b5, bishop b8. A very good, uh, very good approach. The only little problem with this is that right now white can actually take in f6 double your pawns, and then get active on the 7th rank. So, um, thankfully, we have rookie 7, trade that, and it's not a big deal, but you have to stay 
aware of this um, giving away the bishop and getting the rook active. If um, you realize that these things could be annoying, then definitely black should not go bishop b8, but go bishop to e7. But anyways, bishop b8 seems fine, since that capturing f6 is not a big deal. Knight e4, very good, utilizing the outpost. Queen uh, e7. Now the queen might have some ideas to come towards h4. Bishop d3. This was a mistake from White's uh, from White's side. There is a weakness in a5, so we have to look for weaknesses in our opponent's position. And if we have the opportunity to attack them, just go for it. Bishop b6. You know, I mean, Bishop b6. What do you do about the a5 pawn? And so here, probably Black would have to just give away the pawn and look for the attack. Just come Queen uh, Queen h4. Black would have uh, White would have to go King g1, and now maybe we even go g5. Try to open up the position and it's good that we have the bishop far away because white can possibly forget about it and when we play g5 they might take and we checkmate him <coughs> anyways of course that would not happen but um it's an interesting idea really to play some g5 here with with uh, with black and open up the position um so white made this move and now after bishop d3 it allows e5 to open up the bishop in b8 very important and josh went for it f takes e5 and now i i don't understand why he didn't take back i mean it just feels natural maybe he didn't want to trade the bishops but this trade is really good for for black because now the files get opened the the sixth and fifth rank get opened if the rook wants to come also the e file is open this pawn might be weak so this would have been a really nice uh, approach to the position instead josh played queen h4 which is still like a natural move to bring a piece into the game Bishop takes e4. Now knight d6. Bishop uh, rook rook to c2. Okay. Instead, maybe bishop takes d6 had to be played. And after this, rook c6. Oops, not rook c2, but rook c6. This is what I want to show you. And uh, the rook could try to come to attack. And if you play d7 here, of course we go rook d8. And I think this position in this position, black has uh, counter attack. Actually, attack on the. Um, king side, but rook c2 is just as good. Rook d2 trade trade. Bishop takes d6 now, and now rook e6. Okay, this was a big blunder for White. I want you to pause the video and find why d7 was a blunder. Okay, now you're probably back. So the reason d7 is a blunder is because White did not look at Black's threat. And because this rook is not protected in this position, black could have gone bishop takes g2. Obviously, you can't take with the queen because you're losing the rook. And if you're taking with the king, now there's rook g6 check, and you really have to go there because here there's queen e4 and mates. And after king f1, queen h3 check, the king comes to e2, and now rook, oops. And now uh, rook g2 check. The king goes somewhere, we take the queen with check, and then we take in d7, and black is winning. So this, after bishop g2, black would have won this game. Instead, Josh went for rook d6, which seems natural to stop the pawn from promoting, but now white got a little bit active, and the only move that was keeping the position equal was h6. But Josh blundered, he captured this pawn in d7. Please pause the video and find out how white could have won here. Well, the beautiful win for white could have um, happened after rook c8 check and after rook d8. Here is another important move that you have to find because this check was obvious. And that move was bishop f6. Now I'm attacking your queen, I'm attacking your rook. You are pinned, you can't take my queen, you can't take the rook. You have to take here. And obviously if you take with the queen, it won't help that will be made. So you have to take with the pawn to make sure you get that escape for the king but now i can just take check queen g8 and now if i'm really scared about the mates on the last rank i can go queen g3 and white is winning um thankfully for josh so here the there was a turnaround in the game um twice right first black was winning now white was winning and here his opponent um didn't play that the, his opponent went for bishop f6 directly and now bishop takes g2 G takes f6, and when his opponent captured the rook, bishop h3. Um, and after queen d2, 
uh, Black was allowed to give this perpetual check, and the game ended in a draw. Now, instead of queen to d2, white could have tried to play queen d6, but probably didn't realize the perpetual, and now the queen comes back, and it's going to be tough for black to actually find a way to make a draw. But anyways, this was the game. I really hope you enjoyed it. It was a really great um, positional game, and a beautiful tactic was missed by both, so it was a good workout for us. Thank you so much. Stay tuned for more tomorrow. Bye.